Hey everybody, what is up? This Devin Lavore coming at you. Um, wow. It's been a time. For those of you who uh, follow us on a regular basis, you know that a lot of times when God's doing intense work in our lives, we don't really make a lot of videos, particularly me and Michelle together, and there has been some intense stuff going on. You know, in our, in our last video together, I believe we talked about this birthing process like we've gone through this hiddenness thing for seven years and now the lord's turning the table and he's basically saying now we're going to start to see the manifestation of everything we've gone through in the last seven years right it's like okay cool and um so that's kind of stuff's been happening but it's been a birthing process kind of like a labor and delivery type of process and and we've been just kind of comparing what's going on in our lives with certain aspects of the labor and delivery process, you know? Um, but I wanted to share something a little offbeat today, but it totally relates to receiving a blessing from the Lord and walking in that blessing and all of those things. Um, being confident in that blessing and know why you are in the position you're in you know particularly if you're successful and you made it and you received the overcomer's reward you know um also a huge thank you to those who continue to give to us we're always appreciative of that um always and um if you would like to give to us there are paypal venmo and cash app links below and you can click there and give and until such a time as we don't need it but as of right now we're still in that place where we need it um because we're support based okay we live by what you give and we give the praise to the lord for what whatever's given okay so i was having a conversation with my kids today but i tell you what from i mean the kids are in bed right now that's how i'm doing this video all day there's been this kind of theme off and on paying a price for where you're at you know you know jesus said many are called few are chosen so a lot of people are called to pay the price but only few will will pay it and therefore they are chosen to go and get the reward you know what i'm saying um and also so i was talking to them and I'm thinking like, well, where we're at in our stage of life and what we're believing God for and all that, that would normally take 30 years, maybe, you know, at least five, 10 years. If you started a business right now, it would take, I mean, and you were like anointed hustler, it would still take you like one, two, three, five years to get to where we're believing God's gonna, God's been having us dream for and all that and and so my kids were thinking a certain way right and i was thinking well you can't just think one way you know read the bible does god ever do something one way and that's the only way he does it yes god has his principles and that's how he wants us to live you know no matter if they if he puts you on a high station or a low station or a mid station whatever it is he wants you to live from your heart by the principles of god but the way that god does a thing how he chooses to move in a person's life is dependent on a lot of things and the number one thing it's dependent on is the design of god himself you know not everybody is called to be the forerunner of the messiah therefore they're not going to have that kind of life and they're not going to pay that kind of price they're not even going to be required to they're not supposed to right not everybody's called to be abraham david or joseph not everyone's called to pay those kind of prices right not everyone's going to be the ceo of the company not everybody's even called to do that and even if you want the ceo lifestyle well are you willing to pay the ceo price you know the lord had people ask him hey or the the mom i think it was of the two boys sons of zebedee said here have this my son sit at your right hand and your left and and the lord was like well are you able to drink the cup that i'm gonna drink 
Meaning, are you willing to pay the price that I have to pay to get where I want to go to, 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 to receive the reward that I want to receive, you see? And now go and look in the mirror and you'll find the reward that Jesus was out here to receive, okay? That's what he wanted to receive. That was his prize. Whatever, whatever you see in the mirror looking back at you, that's the prize of the Lord. And so, <laughs> and so, um... And even Jesus said, count the cost of being a disciple, right? Many are called, few are chosen. The seed, there was 100% of the seed sown, only 25% of it remained to the end. Many did not, a few did. You see that? Um, I remember when I used to be into bodybuilding, believe it or not. There's this one uh, bodybuilder named Jay Cutler. I was watching him. Um one of his videos one time and he said you know what in order to do what we do you have to be a little crazy a little crazy he's like not actually mentally unstable or mentally unhealthy but there's just got there's got to be something different inside of you to do this he's like because most people will not pay the price to 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 get where we get as heavyweight bodybuilders you, you just can't you you have to have a mental fortitude that's way beyond just weightlifting and training right he's you know there's a price to be paid there is a price to be paid you know and so so i was saying to my kids i was like look at joseph he was elevated just like that but it's like look at the price he paid we know about that price because we read his story but what if you're just encountering joseph for the first time you might say oh well, joseph you got it easy because you're the you know you're you've been promoted and you've been blessed by god and and all of this stuff and it's like yes i've been blessed by god but do you know what price i had to pay to get here you know no one becomes a billionaire accidentally you know, even the inheritance given to a son uh, came from someone who worked hard to get there. You know, a price was paid. We received salvation because a price was paid. We couldn't pay that price, but someone else did. Someone else had to. And there was only one person that was going to do it. There was only one person called to do that. And he paid the heaviest price of all. Amen. And so... Look at what David had to go through. You know, look at the long, long waiting period Abraham had to go through to receive the promise of God. And some people might look at it and go, well, that's just a baby. You Okay, you waited all this time for a baby? Really? You paid that price for a baby? They don't know. They don't know. They don't know the story. They don't know what you've been through. You know, so it's like whatever you're going through, whatever God's got you going through, you know, you're going from hotel to hotel, from place to place, whatever, like we've been doing for seven years, you know, going from this place to that place. I mean, we've God's offered us stability even in the wilderness because the place we're in right now, we've been here for over three years. That's the longest we've ever stayed in any place. But when we first started out, oh my gosh. And then everybody has that story. So many people in ministry and in business have that story of when we started out, whoa and it's just dry bones empty cupboards dry bank accounts and then and then god began to move and things began to go things, things just began to happen you know and there was ups and downs ups and downs ups and downs um but ultimately they paid a price to get to where they are you know whatever their millions or billions of dollars of net worth are today you know or, or however big their ministry is today, whatever it is, there was a price that was paid to get there, you know? So don't be ashamed of the reward if you paid the price, but then don't judge the person who's walking in this amazing blessing because you think it was just handed to them. Well, what if the truth is it really was just handed to them? The kingdom was handed to David. The kingdom was handed to Joseph. You know, Jesus in baby form was handed to Simeon in Luke chapter two, verse 29. And he said, oh, thank you, Father. Lord, now you are releasing me to depart because I'm holding the Messiah, the promise in my hand. You know, it is not wrong for God to hand you the keys to his kingdom. 
when you have been found faithful. And he's like, I, you're the, you're the, you are the ones I have found faithful. I got to hand it to you, you know, literally, I got to hand it to you because that's the way God works. He's looking for faithful people. He always has been, you know, so I just hope that in some way this encourages some of you out there and it, and it, it lifts you up to say that, hey, look, everything you've been through, everything you've been going through, you're still there, you're still in the fight, you're still going, you're still believing, knowing more now than you ever have from this day to the last however many days behind you, you know, like God said, God has been speaking, God continues by his spirit today to push me in this direction, and this is the result of my life, like, the, then that means the reward he promised is just as real. Think about the lady who, who. I think it was Elisha. It was either Elisha or Elijah. I can't. I can never remember. It was Elisha, right? He he said, "Hey, the Lord's called for a famine, and it's gonna last seven years. So go sojourn where you're gonna sojourn, and you can come back in seven years." And then she comes back seven years later tells the story to the king of the land and the king gives to her hands to her seven years worth of work at one time at one time now what did she do how did she labor to earn that she didn't she obeyed the word of the lord through the prophet of god she obeyed. That's how she, and then she went through seven years. See, that's what we don't understand a lot of times when we, do, when we read that story. That was seven years. Me and my family have just gone through seven years of doing what we're doing. It's like there is a, we could, the, the king is in the room. You, you see what I'm saying? And he, the king is in the room. I feel it in my spirit. The king is in the room. Ooh, man. Hmm. <laughs> the king is in the room. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. <laughs> the king is in the room. And he's here to deliver that which he promised. The king is in the room. He's getting ready to deliver what he promised. You know? And he's going he's gonna to hand you restoration. He's going to put it in you. It pressed down, shaken together, running over. He's going to pour it into your bosom. You know what I'm saying? He's going to pour it in. A blessing that you cannot contain. You know? Why? Because you obeyed. You, you did what you were supposed to do. Even when ev everyone else or a lot of people were saying that's crazy. But then some people were cheering you on and all that. The bottom line is you obeyed and now it's time for the Lord to return. It's time for you to return. And in your returning, God is going to, God's going to grant you your petition. You know, like first Samuel one seventeen, where Eli said to Hannah, go in peace. Man, may the Lord God grant your petition, you know, um, because she had been going up year after year after year after year. It doesn't say how many years she went. It could have been seven. You know, the bottom line is that lady paid a price during those seven years. And how, who are we as human beings to say to that lady, you're not worthy of seven years worth all at once. You didn't plow your field. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't. You know what I did do, though? I obeyed the Lord who told me to do this seven-year journey. That's what I did do. And I'm just going to go ahead and ignore you. And I'm going to listen to God who who told me to do it. And I'm going to see what he has to say. I'm going to see what kind of reward he has for me. I'm going to see the king is in the room. I just keep feeling it in my spirit. I don't even know what to do with it, to be totally honest with you. I'm like, should I stop recording the video? Lord, you want me to pray? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The the conundrums of of feeling the flow of the Spirit of God, right? But 
I just feel the Lord just like, keep going, just keep going. So I'm going to keep going here. But but the Lord, he's like, I just want, I just want you to feel this right now. I want you to feel this. And I want the, I want the people to see you, you feel it. And so a lot of times that's all you got to do. In fact, all the time, that's what you got to do. You got to obey the Lord and in obedience, God decides what the reward's going to be exceedingly abundantly. Can I get an amen? Exceedingly abundantly. That's the reward of the Lord. It's going to be exceedingly abundantly. And God says, I'm going to put my glory all over it. I'm going to lather and slather and butter it up and everything. You know what I'm saying? God's going to, he's going to see. It's, it's more than just double for your trouble. God's got something that's, it's very important and significant. You know, and then when we talk about paying a price, you know, not everyone is called or designed to be in the David Joseph position. You know, some people are just happy being bakers and let's let them be bakers. For them, that is their elevation. When they get called by the king to be in the baking position, it's like, oh my gosh, God has answered my prayers. You know, they don't want anything else. See, so it's about really God being, the king is in the room to say, hello, kind of like Santa Claus, Jesus, Jesus Claus. <laughs> it's the Jesus Claus. The Jesus Claus is the word of God is true, John 17, 17, and he will fulfill the desires of your heart, Psalm 37, 4. You know, and so I just hope you guys are encouraged by that. I want you guys to be encouraged by that. Um... As you're watching this video today, it's February 8th, we are celebrating Joah's birthday. And I don't normally like to do this, but tomorrow then is my birthday. He was born on February 8th. Imagine that. That was like that was like, like the best birthday present ever when he was born because the next day was my birthday. So God gave me an early birthday present. So forever, his birthday is February 8th, mine's February 9th. And so we're not going to be doing any videos on that day. But I would imagine on February 10th, me and Michelle will be getting on here and sharing a lot more of what's been going on with us as far as the birthing process of the promises go. And then we'll probably come out on the 11th. Um, so until then, um, we always pray you guys are encouraged and, you know, just keep fighting the good fight but also i really feel that the king is in the room and he's going to he's there he's there for you um I'm gonna keep praying about it and see what the lord says maybe this is a little trailer and to be continued until the video that comes out on the 11th or the 12th or whenever we release it but um yeah i think that's it okay <laughs> But yeah, do you don't don't be ashamed of the glory that God's about to reveal in your life and pour out in your life because you know the enemy's more than likely going to mount up against it, but it's like it's okay. God's going to be your protector and your defender and he's going to he has provision for what the enemy hasn't even decided to plan against you yet. Focus on the Lord and his plan and what he's doing. Okay? And just walk in it, receive it. You know, Revelation 3.11, hold fast to your crown so that it's not stolen or taken. Okay? And so, until next time, guys, we love you here at the channel. And uh, we will be coming at you again soon. Bye-bye.